Well, good morning. Good morning and welcome, and thank you everyone for being here. It's early, and it's day three of Summit, so I'm sure everyone's uh, dragging a little bit this morning, but thank you for coming. So my name is Jeff Catlin. Um, I'm employed by a company called Celestica. I'm also, I also have the privilege of being one of the three uh, co-chairs for the Open Compute Steering Committee. So in this presentation, I'm gonna to touch upon three things. Um, one is the contribution that Celestica, that we're talking about here today. The second will be the process of that contribution. And the third uh, topic will be the importance of this kind of contribution to the community. So the process of this contribution follows uh, what we talked about in the, uh, earlier this morning about the new OCP contribution process. So prior it was a very uh, monolithic contribution process where there was one specification that defined everything from the high level requirements of the product all the way down to the uh, schematics and the Gerber files and, and everything in between. So we've kind of revamped that process and now we have a three stage or a three tiered process. And the, the top level of that process is called a base specification. It can be very generic and states the requirements for a product. The second level um, specification is a design specification and again calls out a little more detail of a product. And then the third level, although it's not shown here, would be the product uh, contribution, um, which would also include the above specifications and design files able to recreate uh, a contribution from a hardware point of view. So this contribution is following that process and we're contributing a design specification today for our 64 by 800 gig or 51.2 T switch to open compute. We're seeking uh, OCP inspired status for the product once the specification is approved. And this specification follows on the heels of the Broadcom base specification. So Broadcom contributed a 64 by 800 gig base specification previously that was approved by Open Compute. Broadcom went a step further and also contributed a design specification for their software uh, validation kit, which follows their base specification. So our specification is following the base specification that Broadcom put out and is a go-to-market um, production level uh, switch, okay? So why are we contributing and, and designing this switch? What's the rationale for this? So just three high level uh, themes that I'm sure we've all heard today. Uh, and, uh, sorry, in the last couple days here. Uh, data centers are continuing to expand their capacities and new data centers are continuing to be established. Okay, so pretty basic stuff. The charts here are all, everything is up and to the right. Okay, that's not slowing down. AI and ML clusters are evolving and starting to uh, be installed and growing. I noted in the last presentation it was stated as a, an AI emergency. So, uh, of course, high-powered um, capacity devices are needed for these AI clusters. And power reduction. We've talked about that at the summit over the past couple days. Uh, power uh, continues to increase, and we need to find a way to, um, as we're as we're deploying new technologies, reduce the power so we can um, implement these AI uh, clusters and machines in addition to scaling out existing data center infrastructure. So that's the rationale for, for this design, this product, and this contribution. So a bit about what, what is this contribution? What is this product? So again, it's a, a 64. Uh, by 800 gig switch, it's de um, designed on the Broadcom Tomahawk 5 silicon. It's a 2RU design, rack mountable in a 19 inch rack. It supports 64 ports, physical ports of uh, 800 gig ethernet through OSFP connectors. The design allows breakout to very high scale port uh, counts through those 64 physical ports. So it can be broken out into 128, 400 gig ports 256 200 gig ports or 320 100 gig ports. So not only a very high capacity design as far as 800 gig, but a very high radix design when you start breaking this design out into multiple lower speed ports. It supports field replaceable 
hot swappable redundant power supplies. Uh, the same for the fans, they're field replaceable, hot swappable and redundant. Supports a, a modular Com Express CPU module uh, that supports either a Hewitt Lake uh, Xeon class processor or a processor module for a uh, more cost effective uh, Atom class processor. It supports an optional BMC module and it, it runs in an, uh, environmental conditions from 0 to 45C. Okay, so that's the high level um, overview of the design. A physical look at the design. Uh, you can see here is the 64 ports, 2RU, uh, of these OSFP ports, two LEDs per port. On the right side of the device, there's four system LEDs. There's your standard RJ45 serial uh, management port and an Ethernet port, RJ45 gigabit uh, Ethernet port for management, a USB 3.0 connector, and two SFP28 ports. So two 10, uh, one 10, 25 gig ports that connect directly to the uh, Com Express module, CPU module. On the rear of the unit, you can see the three system fan modules here. So they're redundant two plus one. Uh, each fan module has an LED to indicate status. And there are four system power supplies in this design. So two plus two redundancy, uh, the power supplies are 2000 watts a piece. Okay. So sample use cases are pretty straightforward, uh, uh, you know, in this kind of design, uh, um, a high capacity class architecture um, or a high radix um, architecture as well. So, you know, this type of diagram here could have 800 gig links from the, the spine layer down, down to the lower switches, or it could be 400, 200, or, or very high density 100 gig links. So very um, flexible design and a very high performance design. Uh, the design is a very modular design, uh, which allows um, a bunch, a few benefits, which we'll talk through at the end. Um, but an overview here of the block diagram shows seven PCB boards uh, to make this design. The board number one is what we call the base board, and it provides connectivity for the other modules in the system and, and uh, components such as uh, the second board here, which is the COMI module, again, um, Xeon class and an Atom class processor module available. Board number three is the BMC card. It's based on the Open Compute Run BMC specification. It supports an A-Speed 2620 BMC controller. Uh, PCB number four is the, the switchboard. It plugs into that baseboard, and the switchboard supports the Tomahawk 5 silicon. Um, associated circuitry and the front panel card cage connectors. Uh, board number five uh, is on the front panel. It's an LED board, we call it. It supports the system LEDs and the um, RJ45s and the SFP28s. Uh, board number six are power boards that allow the power supply modules to connect into the baseboard to supply power to the system. And board number seven are the fan modules. So the fans have a small PCB board, uh, which also connect into that baseboard. So seven PCB assemblies um, for this modular design approach. It's a phyless design approach, so very clean design, does not have flyover cables, is not a CPO design. It's a very high speed, high density um, ASIC that is routed to the front panel right on the PCB substrate. Software support, uh, we support OpenBMC uh, on the RunBMC module. That's an open source BMC NOS package. Um, included in that package, we support Redfish and the Open Compute Baseline Management Profile. The device supports the Open Network install environment, or ONI, which allows various other NOS uh, options to be installed on the device. It supports Open Network Linux as a Linux distribution, uh, as a reference design. It supports uh, Sonic, software for open networking in the cloud. So that's the default NOS, an open source version of Sonic uh, we provide on this. And there'll also be commercial uh, network operating systems available on this as well. So a full solution um, we're bringing forward with not only the hardware platform, but uh, software support and software partners. So a timeline of the uh, contribution and kind of an overview of the process again. Um, today we're submitting the specification 
at uh, Open Compute. This specification is available on the contribution portal. So if you're interested in reviewing the technical the more technical specification, just log on to the OCP website, go under contributions, go under the contribution database and portal, search for Celestica, you'll find this contribution. So that's today. Uh, throughout the course of the next uh, four to eight weeks, the um, specification will go through a review period within OCP uh, with all the groups, all the project groups, and then uh, at an incubation committee or a steering committee meeting, um, we'll vote and decide whether to approve or not approve this specification. My hope is it will be approved. Um, after that approval of the specification, um, the product will see, receive an OCP-inspired badge. Um, so this is seeking OCP-inspired status, so that's just a badge that the product will receive and, and can carry. And then we'll place the device on the OCP marketplace. So that's the, that's the kind of the timeline, the target timeline and the process. Um, so, so again, why is this important to OCP? So the OCP, as you probably know, has a marketplace where um, consumers of OCP technology can come in and view the various OCP designs that are available for purchase. Um, that includes everything from servers to storage to networking and, and other types of devices. It's very important for us as a community to keep that marketplace growing and a healthy place for consumers of products to come in and view OCP technologies and pur purchase OCP technologies if they choose. So that's, that's, you know, the importance of this contribution is bringing new technology, this 800 gig technology or, or high uh, radix switch technology uh, to the marketplace. So I encourage others as I get to my, I'll get to my call for action later. Um, OCP tenants, this is part of the process as well. Every contribution has to meet um, the OCP tenants to be accepted. And the, the five of those are listed here. So as far as openness, this is a, a, a completely open design specification. As far as efficiency, um, as you saw on one of the first slides, to get the same amount of bandwidth in a small folded you know, cloth design, this box provides almost a 75% power savings compared to that type of design to get that much capacity. Uh, the impact, again, it, it's, it's allowing these AI clusters to be built and deployed. It's bringing the new technology to the OCP marketplace. Scale we talked about is very high performance and sustainability, so I go back on this to the, the modular design. So at the end of the life cycle of this product in future years, it's very easy to come in and harvest key technology pieces out of this design based on its modularity, okay? So now my call for action. So hopefully I've described the process of doing a contribution. You can do a base specification, um, you can do a design specification, you can do a, a product specification. Um, so I urge consumers of OCP technology, if there's something they're looking for, to create a base specification. It's very easy, there's um, instructions on the OCP website of how to create your own base specification. That will set in motion um, uh, notice to the vendor community that there's a requirement from a consumer of OCP technology out there. So it's a very easy process now to get consumers involved in this uh, process. So I urge consumers, if there's something you're looking for and you want to deploy and you don't see it today, contact um, you know, your, your leads here of the networking project and start to um, understand how to create a base specification. If you're a uh, vendor, it's very easy, hopefully you've seen here, to create either a des design, a base specification if you wanted to, follow a base specification with your design contribution, or go one step further and do a whole product contribution, okay? So with this new contribution process, um, we've made it much easier for the different levels um, of consumers or vendors to participate in OCP to keep a healthy community going forward and get more products on the marketplace. Um, again, this design specification and this presentation um, should be available right now on the portal. Um, 
We're targeting again Q1, um, you know, availability of this product for customers that, that want to contact us. We have the product here. We have a booth here right outside um, in, in the hall here. So if anyone's interested in seeing the product, certainly stop by and we have many technical people out there, uh, much more than I, that can talk through the, the value of this product and how it's architected. Um, and again, to get involved, if uh, you're not involved today, it, the most simplest thing is uh, join the mailing list and uh, start to understand what goes on uh, in the projects and join a project meeting. That's it for me. I think there might be a minute or two for a question if there is. Thank you, Jeff.